Hey there, iOS developers. If you watched our previous quick tip, you learned that you don't have to give up your fancy UI view animations just because you're using constraints. The trick is that instead of directly animating your view's positions themselves, you can animate their constraints either by animating the constant associated with those constraints or by enabling and disabling completely different sets of constraints to make your views do different things and then calling layout if needed within the animation block. But this came with a couple of extra quick tips from one of Google's very own engineers, Jessica Horowitz. Jessica is an engineer working on some cool new native iOS search features, and she had a few notes on how you could best optimize your constraint animation. So in our previous video, you'll recall that I could make these three views switch from being left aligned to right aligned simply by removing and then adding different sets of constraints. It turns out, however, that adding and removing constraints from your layout requires quite a bit of work from the auto layout engine and can be pretty CPU intensive. And as some folks around here are fond of saying, performance matters. Ah, don't, don't do that. Shoot. So uh, instead of enabling and disabling different sets of constraints, Jessica recommends you enable all the constraints at design time. Let me show you. So here I'm going back into Interface Builder and I'm going to enable the constraints that both left align and right align my views. Of course, when you do that, Xcode will once again complain that you have conflicting constraints, but uh, don't freak out. Are you freaking out? Stop it. Instead, go into your inspector here and change the priorities of your constraints. In my example, I'm going to change the priorities of the ones I want Xcode to ignore for now to 1, and I'll change the priorities of the ones I want to keep to 999. Now we can go back into our code, and instead of enabling or disabling our two sets of constraints, we could just change the priorities back and forth between 999 and 1, a little something like this. I have the same behavior as before, but this kind of priority changing is much more efficient than enabling and disabling constraints entirely. Uh, by the way, in case you're wondering why I had to change my high priority constraints to 999 instead of leaving them at the default value of 1000, it's because iOS interprets constraints set at 1000 as required constraints, meaning that I can't set them later to anything lower. Setting it to 999 means it'll probably take priority, but it's also optional, so I'm able to lower it later on. Now, in addition, Jessica had a second tip for you. You'll notice that in my samples, I've been calling layout if needed on self.view right there in the view controller. Now, in many cases, particularly little examples like this, it'll work just fine. But in some more complex cases, it will not. Let's take a look at this example here. You can see I have a container view controller, this red and blue thing, placed inside another view controller, where I've added these gray bars here at the top and the bottom. Now watch what happens when I animate a few constraints within the container view controller and then call self.view.layout if needed. You can see that this container itself animates smoothly, but these bars at the top and the bottom, as well as the placement of the container pops, which kind of ruins that whole smooth transition look I was going for. So the trick here, and our second quick tip of the day, is that you really need to call layout if needed on the deepest view whose size or position won't be affected by the constraints you're animating. So uh, in this example, I found that I was able to get a smooth animation by calling layout if needed not on my view controller's view, but on my view controller's views super views super view. So uh, oh, that, that's much better. Uh, but how did I figure that out? Well, I would love to tell you it's because I logically analyzed my views hierarchy and calculated the appropriate level from there. But honestly, I just kept adding super views until I got something that worked. Trial and error. It's great. So uh, that said, you can always break out the big guns and call layout if needed on your views window, th this thing here, uh, which basically forces auto layout to recalculate your entire hierarchy. But that, as you can imagine, gets pretty expensive and is probably excessive in most cases. Remember, perf matters. Oh, go away. You've, you've got your own show. Leave mine alone. So uh, thank you once again to Jessica for the tips. Jessica, I know you work here, but you have totally earned yourself a Google t-shirt too. But what about you? Got a quick tip? Send it to me at this address here, and you can be just like Jessica. Well, I mean, in the fact that you'll get a t-shirt. I can't guarantee you'll get to be an engineer here or anything, but uh, you know, we are hiring. Just saying. So thanks once again for watching, and I will see you soon on Route 85.